since I'm a full-time investor, you know, I need to make money in the short term, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so what are those strategies going to be? And that's where you get to my special situation mm -hmm. stuff. You know, if I, if I find like, if we find like a catalyst that we think is going to maybe materially affect the valuation of a company, um, an acquisition going on that may do the same thing, Rest balance sheet restructurings, model, you know, that fixed capital structure, um, activism, um, and non dilutive offerings. That's, that's a great, by the way, um, short term strategy. So these. What was the last one? Non dilutive offerings. So non dilutive. Have, so how, do, how are they doing that? So you have, so you have a situation where, Every time we see an, like um, a filing for a, a company wants to raise money, or issue, well, you see a an S three, for example, or a, or if, and we all assume a, it's called a shelf, right? That a company puts out a, a filing, they're going to issue issue shares. So issue shares is dilution, right? So the, the, every time we see that document, we're thinking dilution. They're going to dump all these more shares in the market, which is going to you know dilute the earnings per share and your ownership, and stock goes down, right? Well, the stock goes down too because of price discovery. You have to give a discount to the, to make the offering go go through. But there are these. So, but not all these offerings are really offerings of new shares. A lot of times, they're offerings by current shareholders that want to sell a bunch of stock, right? So, but you have to still entice others to buy that so the stock falls, like twenty, maybe 20, 30 percent. And there's no change of valuation of the company at all, right? And you're like, oh, we just have a big holder that wants to get out of this thing, which is actually great for the company. They're just managing the sell down. Yeah. And you'll see like a, I mean, those are some of the best, you know, you can see 20, 30, 40% returns really quickly on those bounce backs once the offering is done. You know, and sometimes even on that dilutive offering, you'll see new shares come in to pay down debt in the balance sheet. Well, yeah, you're, you're actually de-risking the company. Yeah. So maybe there is more, maybe it is better. And then that effect isn't that bad in the end, right? So those are great little bounces we like to see. And we'll play that in like big caps. I'll go. I'll go large cap in that stuff. I'll start going up the food chain in those ones. So what's your what's your definition of nano cap versus micro cap? Where's the so nano cap? Yeah, fifty million or less is nano cap. Between fifty and three hundred million is, is micro cap. We'll look at companies for if we're like five five hundred million or less. I'll I'll go that high for my core strategy. But I'll, I'll go as high as four billion for these special situation stuff, though. Which you go into small cap land there, right? Yeah, for, um, that's probably the, the bottom of mid cap, maybe. Yeah, that's probably the top of small cap, I guess. Yeah, and that's a Peter, Peter Lynch used to be there. He used Peter Lynch would be four billion or less, and that's why I remember. That's why I guess kept that. I think it's <laughs> and, a good uh, number. I, I like I like hunting in that. I like. I think that's a good cutoff. Like I think above four billion. It's a slightly different strategy to below four billion because above four billion, they really got to have professional management. They need to be pretty robust. They got to be able to. They've got uh, guys who are. It's sort of beyond just the engineer, founder, or whoever was in there. It's like a professional management team who are looking to grow it into a monster. Below that, you're kind of looking at the founder, entrepreneur, and it's kind of it's almost like private equity, listed private equity. Absolutely, yeah. You just a whole new ball game there, and plus you got more competition of for, for of ideas there looking with you. So it's it's so true. Um, I'll give a great great example of that one was a stock that um. Uh, if, am I allowed to talk stocks here? Yeah, absolutely. As, as long as you as long as you want to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I don't I don't own it anymore, but it was a BXC was a symbol. Uh, it was a blue link, so it's a round tripper. So it was a multi bagger to a multi bust. <laughs> And so um, it was. It was a company that we had bought. Um, it was a leading building supply, um, wood building supply company, and they um, got crushed in the recession of 08, 09. And um, to save them, a PE firm came in, Cerberus Capital, and took a fifty a fifty percent stake in the company. I think a fifty one percent stake in the company, and um, I, I, somewhere along that, for a couple of years, I think they tried to take it private. They said no at a really cheap price. So, um, you know, there was a lot of, so fast forward to 2000, um, I think maybe 16 or 15, we started looking at it ourselves. There was no, uh, they had, went to penny land, did a reverse split. Um, it was about six, five, six bucks a share. And there was, every second alpha article was, 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 was negative about it, which turns out to be four years later, probably right. But so um, they kept promising they were going to sell the assets, delever the balance sheet. Um, and pay off all this, this amount of debt they had um, and get costs under control. Um, 
get out, out cut out a lot of redundancy in the sales process, um, get closer to the customers. It was all things that made sense to me. Um, so I just thought, you know, I'm gonna. I liked management portray a lot of the story to me at the time. So we bought a lot of it around six, seven bucks. Um, got as high as like maybe 10, 11 and pulled all the way back. And I was holding it for two years and that's all, everything just destroyed like in a few weeks, right? <laughs> like what's going on? Cause they, they were making progress, right? They were selling some stuff, assets, revenues were trying to grow a little bit. Well, it turned out the Serbius wanted out, Serbius Capital. So they had to do like a, a, a offering at seven bucks a share. So the stock went from like 11 to 12 bucks to seven bucks relatively quickly. Um, Unfortunately, I, I already had so much of the stock, I didn't want to participate in the, in the offering. But they sold it. The second they sold it, management went and bought some stock. Um, stock got 11, 12 bucks. They announced a transformative acquisition, which they couldn't do when Cerberus was there. And I think part of the reason that Cerberus might have left was because Blue Wings wanted to do this acquisition. Cerberus probably didn't want them to do it. We're going to find out why in a second. <laughs> so, so the stock the stock goes at fifty bucks, or wow. forty five dollars, like, like in two days, basically. You know, uh, we sold most of our position on that run, and then we we held a little bit and sold the rest, like in the twenties. Um, so it just it turned out that they used. So this what didn't make sense was they spent all these years getting rid of debt, right? And then they went and piled on more debt to buy this acquisition, right? It, it was a really great if, on paper acquisition if everything would have worked perfectly. You know, and we were, you know, probably in the seventh inning of the housing recovery, you know, and they kept saying, hey, we got a few more years to go. We're still not at the peak yet. Well, we might not get the peak again. Who knows, right? So um, the stock down like six, back to six, seven bucks a share. And they just buffed the, buffed the whole thing. And we had a lot of bad things going on, right? And, and the, economy, the economy did not keep on going. You had the interest rate situation. You had the yield curve crap. It just, everything was went upside down. So now the things not go to their plan. Housing recovery slowed. So they're just they're hurting now. And but that was that's an interesting thing. A that the things there that was a that was one of our special situation buckets. You had a restructuring and the debt, right? You had an acquisition, and you had a you had a non-dilutive offering, you know. And but staying long term, that would have been a, would have been a, just a horrible, right? So that that that's an example of a short term thing we look at, though. What do you is it interesting now? Back at six or seven dollars. I'm gonna look at it. I I, I looked at it like a few weeks ago, and I, was, um, I might spend some time on it again. But I just don't like that decision they made there. Yeah, and they got that act. They got it so cheap. They had a great, got a great deal. I got to wonder why they got a great deal. And now I'm maybe seeing it now. Maybe we're seeing this execute. They're not able to execute how they thought. And I, I don't. It's probably because of that. And um, the synergies weren't all expected. But it might be worth looking at. I just I don't love it. I hate that industry. Hate it. So you, you probably don't see me going there again. It just it was a situation where I just saw an incredible catalyst coming over. Now, the catalyst originally was just paying the debt off. Once they pay the debt off, there'll be this little maybe a double out of it. But then all this other stuff happened. I'm like, oh wow, you know, I got this bonus thing that's not going to last forever. <laughs> got really lucky with it um, and move on. 